You know what time it is? Yeah. Time for to wear these glasses. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta turn these on. New product time. Oh, that too. New, 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 new. These are the last new products of the year. This is it. Wow. This is the. This is our last chance to convince you to pick up something. <laughs> um, okay, let's start off with this little button. Um, I actually rather like these little buttons, and I have a mini demo for them as well. It's a, um, it's a, a toggle alternating switch, and um, you know we have them with the little red buttons, and they were out of stock for a little bit, but we got them back in stock. And uh, here's a little demo, and just shows I just have it plugged into um, a solderless breadboard. And um, what happens is when you press the button, it turns off, and on the left and right side, kind of to the middle. So the middle pin either connected to the left side or the right side. So once, sorry, once to connect to the left side, and then press again to disconnect, and then oh, click again to go to the right side. So, hold on, I have to like, every time you click it, it turns on and off, but it alternates. So I think it's kind of useful for like UI or like mode selection or something. Right. Don't need a microcontroller. Just yeah, if you just want to alternate something, I mean, like it's also if you want to like, I mean, you can do like 12 volts and like five amps or something. So yeah. it's it, or half an amp. So it's good for like, oh, I just want to have two options whenever I press a button. So it's like a toggle switch, but it's got a nice little push button. Miss that? Okay. Next up, we're going. Ooh, this is the huzzah. Kit. Yeah, this is kind of coming back because we've had parts of this before. Right? We we have had this kit before. This is an upgraded kit, and it's so upgraded that I thought it would be worth. Um, we talking about it. So this is the um, Huzzah Adafruit IO starter kit. We wanted to have a starter kit that basically kind of had all the things that we thought people would want to do. Um, it has a bunch of resistors and capacitors, or sorry, a bunch of resistors. It has a door opening sensor, like a magnetic sensor. It has a micro servo. It has a PIR sensor for detecting human motion. It has a large red LED. It has two slide switches. Can you hide me? I can see what mm -hmm. else is in here. <laughs> Buttons, RGB LED, uh, piezo vibration switch, large green LED, and um, a humidity and temperature sensor. So it's kind of like a lot of inputs and outputs. And it used to come with just a Huzzah breakout board and a serial console cable. Now it comes with the Huzzah Feather, which is really great. It's an all-in-one ESP8266 board, and you can talk to any of these, any and all of these devices and sensors and use them with Adafruit I.O. So it's a really great way to get started with Adafruit I.O. because you get a ton of different parts that are uh, good for internet connectivity, like sensing temperature, humidity, having indicator light go off, uh, detecting when a door opens, uh, detecting when a human has moved in the room or buttons are pressed, playing beeps remotely, all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I think there's probably a guide for each of those components with Adafruit I.O. Like mm -hmm. I know the door sensor, there's a guide for that. So really cool stuff. Yeah, you can, you can basically make like all sorts of home automation projects with this. Okay, next up, cable. Ah, this one is a pretty straightforward but useful little thing. It's a cable that has HDMI Classic plug on one side, and on the other side it has a mini HDMI. So this is really great for your Raspberry Pi Zero because it has a mini HDMI plug. Also great for like cameras and stuff. Right. So, so I'm kind of glad we have some, this because we have so many devices. Cell phones now too. Even. Cell phones yeah. sometimes have it, or tablets if they have HDMI, they have micro, or they might have mini HDMI. So this is an all-in-one cable, so you don't need an adapter. You just plug in the mini HDMI, HDMI on the other side, it's five feet long. Great quality take cable, good price. There you go. Okay, next up. Oh, this is the um, micro solenoid. So we've had a couple solenoids, but people wanted a smaller one, and I was like, okay, I'll get you a smaller one, no problem. This one is a five volt uh, solenoid. It's a push pull type, which is very nice. It normally does a, when you activate it, it pushes, but then when you release, it does a pull because it, it goes back to its initial. Um, Location, so I have a little demo. Well, this the demo is very much like this animated GIF <laughs> or video. Um, but basically, you can have a microcontroller and it draws up to an amp. So, you do need to have a power transistor. Here, I'm using an N channel FET, you need a diode to protect as well. And then um, you can basically use it to uh, activate stuff. So, I just have it connected up to a trinket and then just goes back and forth. How much force do you think that that can exert on something? I totally. Don't but enough to I, move, like actuate a switch. Yeah, or, I mean, what this yeah. is really good for is if you want it to like um, hit something. Yeah, I could see like moving a, a switch. Button. Like make something 3D printed that goes onto a light switch mm -hmm. and flicks it on. Yeah, it doesn't have a long throw. It's only a couple millimeters, but this is still very handy if you just want to move something a little bit. And again, they're so easy to use because it's either on or off. Um, 
you know, I've done projects. I've seen a lot of projects where people will kick this up to like a xylophone. It will, it'll press it to, oh, to wow, ring the bell cool. or something. Yeah. Yep. So um, very handy. Just don't forget you'll need a transistor and a diode as well. Um, but we have a, a simple wiring diagram and any tutorial on solenoids will do. So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. <laughs> All right, that's it. Okay. It's very cute, very small. Next up. These are DIY RCA uh, plugs. If you want to make your own audio cables or video cables, these are really high quality, um, very handy. Uh, you know, I didn't want to carry like every single possible adapter cable from like RCA to mono, quarter, eighth inch, TRS, da, da, da. so you just carry little pieces. So you can just um, solder to these and uh, you get you know, red, yellow, um, red, white, and yellow, which is just kind of the standard colors for uh, left, right audio and, and video, and build your own cables as necessary. So now we can DIY it. Very nice cool tips. Okay, next up. This is the um, Octoprint parts pack. I hope I hope that I'm getting it right. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, there's a multiple uh, printing software. Um, it, it comes in a lovely green case. You get a SD card that comes with. Um, the printing software already written onto it, so you just plug it in and go. It comes with a power cable and a Wi-Fi dongle. Um, put this together, and you can use it to control many 3D printers that um, that software can, uses. Uh, I know, like this, the printers like the Simple Metal and stuff, right. especially ones that don't have a control board. But it basically lets you um, over Wi-Fi, you can control your printer with um, with some really nice control software, right. and you can. I it's, I would almost consider it like a required thing for some of the printers, like the PrinterBot. Like it's by far the best upgrade. Have I've you used this, this one? Uh, yeah, OctoPrint oh, is great. awesome. It's really cool. Like you can just, it has a whole great little web interface. You can monitor your printer remotely. Uh, you can take time lapses. You I think like also you can camera. put a camera on it and then exactly, you can, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can take time lapses. Stuff. But it's, it's, it's a lovely way to basically, you know, so you don't have to keep your computer tethered. Exactly. You can disconnect your printer. You just have it controlled by the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a perfect device for this. Okay. It's a full parts pack. Um, this is a little adapter. Uh, it's just once in a while you have devices that have a 5.5 slash 2.5 millimeter DC jack, and they're slightly the inner uh, prong is slightly too large, so you can try to plug in a 2.1 millimeter DC power supply. It just won't fit, and like you really shouldn't force it. Um, instead, you can use this adapter, and it will take the larger plug and convert it to the slightly slightly smaller plug. Another thing is it's really hard to tell by looking at a device which right. one it is. <laughs> so like you always find out later that you're like, ah, oh, this is one of the ones that uses 2.5. So I just thought this would be really handy because all the power adapters we carry are 2.1. Everything we do is 2.1 millimeter center positive. And this basically just lets you use it right, with those. One wacky device you have. <laughs> one yeah. wacky device that we have. Yeah, well, yeah. we had those lights, but yeah. you, know, there's, you always bump into them. Yep. A handle, little adapter. This is a swivel caster. I mean, it looks enormous. It's actually quite small. <laughs> yeah, this I mean, it is looks where, like it's gigantic. Yeah, this is where the photography is a little deceiving because it's not actually the size of... I mean, you can see by the screws, oh, you're like, wow. wait, this is actually Eventually, quite small. Eventually, it's like, oh, this is kind of a very high-quality small caster. Yeah, so um, I can show it on the overhead yeah, really fast. Right um, but it's this small, and it swivels this way, and then, of course, it's a wheel. And it's used in the robot kit, but I just wanted to show it off just to show how small it is because it, it, the photos make it look like it's one of those gigantic ones for like cars or you know moving trucks or something. So this is this is what it is. It's, it's small and it's designed to be uh, attached to like a, a robot or something else that moves. And just give it another support that swivels, so that you you know it doesn't matter which way you're moving, it'll always um it'll always follow. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna move right along. We're yeah. Getting close. You're getting close. Here it is. Okay, this is our first robot chassis. Oh wow, that's cool. Now I've had some extremely traumatic um, robot experiences that have caused me to be scared of robots. <laughs> uh, stemming from uh, 6270 experience, um, for those who have done 6270. Uh, and uh, so I, we have not carried, it's been 11 years and we've not carried robotics, but this year is the year. we talked about it. This year, I'm over it. We're finally going you to made peace with the robots. We're, well, I also finally found a, a, a chassis that didn't suck. It's like C Sky. Like, the first one that doesn't suck. Um, this chassis doesn't suck. Um, you know, there's so many chassis that are made out of like plastic, acrylic, and I'm like, okay, well, the first thing that's going to happen is going to fall off a table and it's going to crack in half and it's over. It's acrylic. It's brittle. <laughs> All it does is, is break. And so, um, 
This is the built up robot. This is a nice aluminum chassis so you can uh, drill into it or cut it if you need to. It's soft enough you can, you can cut it with, um, not like scissors, but like a, like a small hacksaw can do it. And what I like about this one is you can build it up as a, a three or, uh, sorry, a two or four um, wheel robot. And, uh, oh, can you hide me? Because it's, um, sure. you can see the caster. So you can see like there's those pr uh, flanges. You can have it have four wheels and each one has a wheel with a little micro servo or, or DC motor, or you can have it with um, two wheels and then this is support and that's fine too. Um, it's just a really lovely little case and it's, it's very affordable. You can basically put together all the parts minus the microcontroller for like 25 bucks. Wow, that's basically, which is Which is kind of nice. I'm like, okay, now we're talking. It's, 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 a, it's a very affordable, nice quality chassis. I like um, the finish on it, that anodized. Yeah, it's got this nice anodized yeah. finish. And so there's, there's a couple different pieces and we sell them individually and we'll sell a pack too at some point. But um, for now, you can get the body and um, you know, it also has this little thing you could clearly put a servo here and you can attach some sensors here and there's um, slots and holes for attaching stuff. And then we have the micro servos. We also have DC motors that fit into, um, that are the same size as these micro servos. We can get continuous servos in these wheels and they're little rubbery wheels and so that's kind of nice. And then um, this kind of can drive around and we've shown this as a demo. And then there's also this um, overhang part you can get, and it comes with standoffs. Basically, gives you a little like we're using it as a battery pack holder, so you can um, keep your electronics safe underneath. And then, um, for example, this demo. Oh, can you zoom out at all, or is this? I just don't know. If this what is do you want to do? Is this uh, zoom outable? Zoom in or zoom out? Zoom out. Oh, yeah. Well, I can only zoom in. Okay, so never mind. I will. Um, yeah, this is. This is it. Tony, can you can you be <laughs> but, my but, assistant? But you can. But you, what you should do is tilt that up. So oh, that's right. Yeah. But that's Thank you, you, science. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. you can so, do that more if you want. No, this is actually good because okay. I, I don't want it to run off the. So um, yeah, I can show. This is. I've shown this demo. It has a um, a blue fruit feather, so it's our um, Bluetooth low energy enabled board, and also has the motor wing, which we just released, and. Um, uh, let me make sure it's on, and I can connect to, it says little red car, and I can connect to it in controller mode. And then with the control pad, I can use the forward button. And oh, wow. Can <laughs> yeah. Make a little Bluetooth controlled <laughs> robot. I'll just have it spin around, because <laughs> that way it won't fall off the table. Um, whoa, sorry, little robot, this is running into the camera. And then forward and back. So what was that whole setup there? How much that cost? So this whole setup, uh, it's, I think, like $50, $60 or something. Okay. Wow. For, the, for, the, for everything. You, you know, it has it's the about chassis. half as much as everything that we saw out there. You actually make it for less. This one uses yeah. the, the DC motor version of the, the micro servo. Um, and you can use it with the continuous rotation servos. And you don't need a motor driver because you can just drive it directly you know, from the Arduino compatible. Um, so that's, you know, we wanted to try both. And, and we have a, a AA battery pack on top as well. But um, this, you know, this works quite well and, you know, has a little bit of space. And I kind of like, you know, a little scared of doing robotics. I, I'm not a huge fan of it because of this traumatic experience. But I thought that this was, you know, a good start. A little rover and it has Bluetooth and, and it's, it, you can fit our feather boards inside of it to have it be Bluetooth controlled. But there's enough space on here for a Raspberry Pi as well. Yeah. Um, definitely could fit a Raspberry Pi A plus, probably a, a B plus or Pi two. Um, could probably fit a B. I mean, it, it's it's you know large enough. You could even three D print like a shell that goes around it. That that would be kind of yeah, cool. Sure. Like, yeah. I always loved the old Heath Kit Hero One robot, the one that was on Mr. Wizard. So I'm already thinking of ideas. Like, I want to build you know the old maybe a, a retro remake of the Hero. Yeah. With it. Yeah. So like for example, if you wanted to, you know, you could put the Raspberry Pi on top, or like this way. And you just mount, I mean, you'd want standoffs, but you could mount it on, and now you have a little yep. uh, Pi rover. So that's another thing I like about this. It's, it's small enough and light enough that you can use these little continuous rotation servos or DC motors, but not so big that you're like, oh my god, this is gigantic. It's right. heavy, and, it, and it's difficult. But it, it's just the right size. You know, you can fit your single board computer on top of it and control it, do a two-wheel or four-wheel drive. And um, yeah, I, I like the finish a lot. I like that it's metal, and I like that it's anodized. Do you think 2016 will be the year of the robots now? It'll definitely be the year that Adafruit is actually going to be doing robots. <laughs> yeah. 
we you know you know how many years in dinner conversations were just when can we start helping people with robots because it's too expensive and no one's doing anything to get robotic learning right. out. There's just you're re, they're reinventing power supplies each time. Everything is taking forever. The thing for me was definitely once we had Bluetooth Low Energy, which we didn't have yeah, till this year, and low cost oh, Wi-Fi. Right. So yep. yeah. without the ESP eighty sixty six as a low cost Wi-Fi or the Feather. Um, or the Blue Fruit. It was it, for me. It was like, you know, we could have done with Bluetooth Classic, but then it only works under Android. And like, right. I, I love Android, but it's it's not yeah. enough. You have to yeah. be able to use any phone, you know, iPhone. It has to have iOS compatibility. And another thing is like, you know, there there has to be wireless connectivity. There has to be a wireless thing. And so, right. I think all this stuff came together. And, and the company that makes these little ro rover, they make the servos, and they contact us. And I said, I was like, okay, actually, I'll take a sample of that. Because yeah. I've said no to like 5,000 samples. <laughs> yeah. Of okay. like kind of crummy robots. So I think this is it. I think this is really good. And, oh, and I think cool. the price is right. I think this is, we're, we're doing yeah. it. And besides, you get it cheaper with the uh, code today, too. 10% yeah. off, too. Yeah. So. Besides the robots, besides these two engineers, this is one of the stars of the show. It's an Ethernet shield. It's an Ethernet shield. This is <laughs> the um, seed. Studios, W550 Ethernet Shield. Um, we're not sure when we're going to get um, official Arduino Ethernet Shields anymore. Um, I don't think they're discontinued, but I think there's just a, a delay um, because of Arduino stuff, and we don't want to purchase from um, evil Arduino. And so um, we're, <laughs> so, look, no, what, what are you going to say? I, yeah, you know, I've had to explain this. Okay, look, so instead we, we decided to pick up this um, really lovely shield from See, They did actually do a really good job. I like that they used a, a, a slim Ethernet jack. Um, we forked the Ethernet 2 library, which is, which, and we just made a couple tweaks, and it works great, actually. So um, check out the link in the product page so, to a library that works uh, fantastic for Ethernet. Uh, the original Ethernet library won't work. You do need to use the Ethernet 2 library because it's a new chipset. And it's it's a lot faster and better. And I forget, does this do power over Ethernet, or is it just purely it doesn't. Data? It doesn't do power e over Ethernet, but but we have um, the fake power over Ethernet adapters where, where you can, can do passive in five volts. And I'm also testing out. I will mention. I'll testing. I'm testing out some little um, DIY adapters that let you basically take Ethernet and split it into a DC jet, like true power over Ethernet. Oh, cool. And turn it into Ethernet. That's not coming out yet, don't, sh don't ask. I don't have, <laughs> not, no ETA, but I'm looking into it. Um, but you know, with Wi-Fi, it's like, I think a lot of people are doing Wi-Fi now right. a lot more. I mean, but this, Ethernet's still useful. This is good, like if you need a guaranteed connection, you know, like Wi-Fi can be flaky sometimes, mm -hmm. so that's yeah. good. Okay, and with that is the last new products of 2015. And then the little red car, that's, that's kind of the. That's a big deal. And then, of course, in 2016, oh, my God, I have, like, we have so many new products coming out. It's yeah. going to be out of control.